Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology. Wish you a very, very, very happy new year 2024. And on this new year's day, let's discuss Venus. <laughs> no, we are not going to discuss Venus. We are not going to discuss Mercury. It's also not about Saturn. It's not about the Sun, Moon, Rahu, Mars. No planet, not even Mercury. We are going to discuss Ketu today, New Year's Day and Ketu, wow, what a topic, what a date. Why is it very important for us to understand our Ketu and Ketu's connection to New Year's? It's very, very, very interesting and very crucial because see what happens on a New Year's Day. This is the English New Year calendar, Vedic New Year, New Year is not now, it is in April as you know. But what happens in this new year? Think astrologically. Every year what happens? What is that one common thing which always happens during this year? What is that? Yes, you guessed it right. Sun is in Sagittarius. Always during New Year's. What happens? See, Sagittarius is the sign of declarations. Sagittarius is the sign of commitments and what happens during the new year or new year's eve we make commitments or you could say what new year's resolutions right now you may or you may not fulfill them you may or you may not keep the new year resolutions but it is very important to understand why do you do this in the first place okay so on around near around 15 december the sun enters Mula Lakshatra, right? Because Mula Lakshatra is in the beginning degrees of Sagittarius. And around 15 December, sun enters Sagittarius. So the first pada of Mula is there. Beginning degrees of Sagittarius. Very, very, very important degree. Because the first pada of any Nakshatra also shows Dharma. Okay. So for Mula Lakshatra, the first pada and the fourth pada is very important. Because the second pada is Artha, third pada is Kama, and the fourth pada is actually Moksha pada, okay? But now, around New Year's time, New Year's Eve, what happens? So, as you know, sun will travel nearly like one degree in one day. So, you could say, by the time it is 31st or 1st of January, around, usually, Sun enters Purva Shada Nakshatra, okay, first pada of Purva Shada in general, okay, there could be variations, but in general, this is how it works. So, Purva Shada is a very important nakshatra because it is the nakshatra where you formalize your resolutions, you declare war on something. So, whenever you are taking a new year resolution, what are you doing exactly? Did you ever think? You are actually declaring war against some bad habit. People always take New Year resolutions. They say, oh, I will not eat sweet. I will not eat this. I will not do that. I will not do this. I will not do that. So basically, what are you doing? You are telling to your bad habits that, hey, look, this time, at least this time, I'll try to fight you and not cater to your whims and fantasies. So that is exactly what a new year resolution is. So either you decide to do something or you decide not to do something. Either way you are waging war, right? And when does this formalize? So this formalizes by 15 December to around 28, 29 December. Because this is the time when sun is in Mula Nakshatra, okay? And when I'm talking of Mula Nakshatra, I must talk about Ketu. See, I have to talk about Ketu because of two reasons. One is because during Purva Shada, you make a declaration, but the formalization of what you want to declare happens already in, when the sun crosses entire Mula. Okay, By the time sun crosses fourth Pada Mula and when he reaches Purva Shada, it is almost like New Year's time. And then you formalize and you make the declaration, but the seed is sown when the sun is in Mula, fourth pada. Starts in the first and ends in the fourth. Now, who is the lord of Mula Lakshatra, planetary wise? We know Ketu is the lord, okay? So, the fire signs, the first nakshatras, they are always, 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 the three nakshatras are ruled by Ketu. And then, 
if you also see Sagittarius, see Mula Lakshatra is a very special Lakshatra. It is like uh, the galactic, it is known as the galactic center of the universe where from where the higher vibrational, uh, higher frequencies of the higher planetary systems and the spiritual world, they descend to this, uh, to this earthly realm, okay? Now, Sagittarius is also very special. Can you tell me why? Because not only Mula, just Mula, the entire Sagittarius, because it is also the sign where Ketu gets exalted, okay? Ketu gets, they say he gets exalted in Sagittarius or uh, you could say Scorpio also, both of them of course. But for sure in Sagittarius, Ketu gets exalted. Why? Because, see you have to understand what Sagittarius is. Sagittarius, I had made a video 4-5 years back. Sagittarius is actually the most rebellious sign. Why do I say this? Because if you see the sign Sagittarius, Somebody is shooting an arrow. Have you seen it? <laughs> so you're shooting an arrow, which means you are declaring war against somebody, right? Now that somebody uh, would not be like a president declaring war against somebody, some other country. But uh, you could declare war against your own bad habits, okay? That could also be uh, Sagittarius and that is what New Year resolutions are about. But what is important for us to understand is that Ketu is a very important planet when it comes to Sagittarius because your Ketu's placement actually decides how you will take your new year resolutions, okay? If your Ketu's placement is not good, then you are most likely not going to stick to your new year resolution. Why do I say this? See, you have to understand what is Ketu. Ketu is a flag. What is flag? Flag is a symbol, a, a declaration of victory. So, when Ketu is well placed, it means that you have achieved victory in one area of your life. And now that is like your past. And then you move on, you move ahead to another area, which is now ready for you to conquer. <laughs> but... If Ketu is not well placed in the chart, you will have a tendency to leave battles. People think, oh, leaving battles means, you know, his or her Mars is not very strong. Maybe Mars will show aggression, fire, fighting. Mm. <laughs> but actually, Mars shows all this. But nonetheless, Ketu shows ending of something. See, Ketu doesn't have the head. What does it mean? No head. It means the thing has ended. Your life has ended. <laughs> life has ended means your, your focus in that particular area of life has now ended. That is past. That's no more there. So because of that, what happens is you feel that, yes, I have conquered my territory. Now I should move on to another uh, territory. And I should now conquer that territory. And if you cannot conquer one particular piece of land or any one single bad habit how can you move on to other bad habits okay so most of the people they will fail with new year resolutions why because they have not fulfilled they have not um, completed their previous new year resolution so how do you expect that they will take on a new challenge seriously that is not possible because when you do this habitually then uh, you um, you, ha you you kind of lose confidence within yourself, okay? And then there are other things also which matter in the chart, like the Lagna Lord, the Sun, the Moon, your Lagna, the Ascendant itself. And where are where are the energies of the chart flowing? Which Mahadasha you are in? Which Antardasha you are in? So all these things matter. They they matter very seriously. But what we need to understand is that if you want to take a new year resolution this year you can take it but before taking a new resolution please ask this question to yourself did you complete your previous year's resolution so one of the easiest ways to strengthen your ketu wherever your ketu is placed i don't care it is exalted debilitated in dusthan kendra trikon i just don't care where it is placed but the easiest way 
to strengthen your ketu is not by doing some magic mantras is not by giving donations not by doing <coughs> a thousand things it is by fulfilling your old existing commitments which you ran away from so therefore if you want to take a new year resolution this year take it the choice is yours but before taking it ask this question to yourself have i completed the the new year resolution of 2023 2022 2021 2020 2019 if not then try to also fulfill those commitments okay so therefore because if you do not do this and you keep jumping to new year resolutions then you are actually spoiling your ketu because you are not marking a flag okay now of course you may not be able to fulfill your new year resolutions 100 percent and probably nobody could do it okay except god himself but what when i say 100 percent when i say fulfilling your new year resolutions when i say completing or achieving i don't mean the final outcome i mean 100 percent efforts so your dream might have been Oh, I want to earn a million dollars in 2023. <laughs> and maybe you were running a bad dasha. And you couldn't. In fact, maybe you lost half a million dollars. It could be the scenario. But what is important is to understand that did you, did you put 100% efforts? Did you upskill yourself? Did you try to provide services to others? Did you try to help others? Did you try to make other people's lives better? Because only then they're going to pay you a million dollars or maybe even more, right? <laughs> but maybe you did all of this. And even then, what to speak of warning, you lost 10 million, you lost half a million. And that's fine. I mean, uh, your resolution was to give 100%. Okay, so therefore, please make sure that wherever your ketu is placed, irrespective of that, you fulfill your existing previous new year's resolutions and then move on to the next resolution and of course as i said this just does not depend on your ketu it depends on your world chart your dashas and sun moon lagna lagnesh uh, all the planets like comprehensive analysis so therefore uh, please look at the overall chart and identify what are the most important areas of focus so whenever you get a yearly chart reading done you need to ask the astrologer where should i focus in 2024 you can take a yearly focus or monthly january february march like this you know which are the areas should i focus on where can i grow okay so if you get a reading done for you then please make sure you get a yearly outlook and also monthly outlooks okay and when i say monthly outlooks I don't mean to say some uh, some mundane predictions. Okay, this one, this will happen, that will happen. No, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is try to learn from the astrologer that, okay, January, what are my strengths? Where should I focus? And what can I expect? Okay. And what are the things that I should be careful of? And what are the things that I can take risks on? Okay, so this is this balancing of risk and risk uh, uh, this assets and liabilities you know not just uh, in terms of money but in terms of anything you know your health relationships okay so this is something which you should also know when consulting an astrologer for a yearly chart reading all right thank you so much once again wish you a very very happy new year if you like this video hit the thumbs up and please make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed to it yet and for consultations regarding your profession, marriage, health, spirituality, you can always go to my website down in the description section, exoticastrology.in. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will surely find him in 2024 and the next years ahead. Thank you so much. Please take care.